Hello, <laughs> it's Rachel and I am live. I am going to do another Facebook Live video for how to make a certain kind of card. And the card that we're gonna do today is an origami twist card. Um, that's the name I gave it. <laughs> I don't know what it originally was called, but it's like an origami fold because you're using a square piece of paper and it twists to fold shut. So I just named it origami twist fun fold or fold card. So we'll see. Someone else can correct me if they know the exact name, the proper name of this card. I would love to know. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around the um, camera so that you can see onto my desk. Hang on. All right, let's clip you in. Who do we have with us? Oh, we have Mackenzie. Mackenzie's with us. Hi, Mackenzie. All right, I'm almost in there. Takes a while. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for joining. And there's Faith. Thank you. I'm glad that we have a couple people live with me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start by showing you this card. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to shove my paper over a little bit here. So my work zone is a little... There we go. We're centered now, aren't we? So this is the card when it's closed, and it's a square card. And when it opens up, it looks like that. It's really fun. <laughs> Let me show you another version. This one is a, um, a slightly larger card. It does the same fold. And this is the fold that I'm going to teach you. So let me grab the corners here. And when you open it up, ta-da! Isn't that amazing? Hey, Deb. Deb's joining us, too. Here is another card just like that. Like that. So fun. Aren't they fun? Okay, so what I did is I saw someone on a demonstrator um, Facebook group share this type of fold. And I guess it's been out there for a while because uh, another uh, friend of mine said that she had done a fold like this for her daughter's birthday invitations years back. So it's not new which is why I want to know the name of it. <laughs> and um, anyways, I decided to figure it out. So I took a piece of computer printer paper and cut it to eight by eight. I just took a square of it. And I knew because I had seen the picture um, of this, this card opened, I knew that it needed to be divided into four sections this way and four sections this way. So I just did the math and I said eight inches divided by four um, is two inches in each section. Now this paper is a little bit smaller. I didn't work with um, eight by eight at first. I think I did. I think this is six by six. Oh, I know why I did six by six because our designer paper comes in six by six, and or twelve by twelve. And I wanted to know if I could get four of these little mini cards out of a sheet of designer paper. So after I experimented with the cheapo stuff that you don't have to worry about and you can just throw out if it doesn't work. Then I went on and I did the larger versions. And so we're going to walk through making this whole entire card today. So what you'll need if you're going to recreate this cute little Halloween, um, happy Halloween card is the following supplies. So we need some cardstock. Cardstock and paper. We're going to start out with the designer paper. This is one of our newer designer papers. It's in our 2017 holiday catalog. And it is called, and I have to peek again, I think it's Spooky Night. Yep. Spooky Night Designer Series Paper, and it comes with coordinating colors like the very vanilla is in there, the pumpkin pie, the basic black, so some, some nice colors that are very traditional Halloween colors. And then, of course, we have the flip side of all of these papers, too. Now, when I flip this over, um, I did use up a lot of this paper, so you're going to see all my scraps. These are the flip sides to those sheets. So lots of fun designs, very fun designs. And a lot of these coordinate with punches and dies, and it's just a great paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this cat sheet out because we're gonna need to do something with that. And I'm gonna put the um, rest of the paper aside. We'll set it way over here so it doesn't get our desk messy. Okay, what else do we need? We need to have some um, cardstock, and the basic colors are basic black, uh, pumpkin pie, and very vanilla. And then we also need some rhinestones. Let me grab those. These are new, and I've cut my sheet down because I've used quite a bit of them, but they're black rhinestones. And I'm not sure if you can see in this light. Oh, there, maybe. There's a little reflection going on. But they are definitely rhinestones. They have glitter, glittery glow to them. You know, they look like they have, you know, got little diamond cuts on them. So very, very pretty stuff. Hey, Sandy's joining us. Hi, Sandy. 
We're just going over the supplies that you need to make this very fun card. Okay, what about the tools? You will need the new cat punch. And the cat punch, which I will demonstrate right now for you, works with the paper. Let me trim this up just a little bit more here. It works with our designer paper. So even if you don't buy the fun stamp set to go with it, you can still cut out some already, you know, cats with faces on them already. Now the stamp set that coordinates with this is called Spooky Cat and it has this cat here. It has a cat face. So hey, Michelle's joining us too. I'm so glad that we have quite a few people joining. This is going to be fun. Okay, so anyways, that cat punch with uh, the paper, perfect. Gotta love it. Okay, and then we also need for tools some adhesive. I recommend the Fast Fuse for this card because you are going to be bending um, the paper quite a bit when you open and close it. And the stronger the adhesive, the better. So Fast Fuse is great, although you can use Snail, our traditional adhesive. Um, you'll also need this, I think it's called the Classic Label Punch. Um, correct me if I'm wrong or, or confirm if I'm right, you guys, because <laughs> I don't, I forgot to look this one up, but I think it's the Classic Label Punch. And um, we'll set those aside. You're going to need a, a, a scissors. Now, I do have some contraband, shh, but um, I use a long scissors when I'm going to work with this card because I have to dr trim some diagonal folds, and I think it's quicker when I'm just um, using a long scissors rather than my, my trimmer. But, um, you know, we just don't have a long scissors anymore, so yeah, there it is. I have a long scissors. Shh, it's not stamping up. Don't tell anyone. And then I have a trimmer. And of course I have to have my inks for my stamp set, which I did previously show you, the, the wonderful uh, Spooky Cat set. This is the new one in the holiday catalog. Now if you don't have this set and you want to recreate this card, the only stamp that I'm using in this whole entire set is the one that says Happy Halloween. So you could, you could really get away with not having this stamp set for it. But once you have the cat punch you kind, and the papers, you kind of want that set too. <laughs> and then I'm using some black ink. You can use any black ink. Um, the one I'm choosing is the Tuxedo Black Memento ink. Oh, and the bone folder. You need your bone folder. So let's go ahead and start by shoving some of this stuff out of the way so our table area is clean. And we're going to cut our paper. Now, I am going to post this on my blog. What is today? Tuesday? I'm going to post this on my blog on Thursday. My, that's my plan. And so I will list the measurements again there so you don't have to memorize them right now. But um, these are what they are in case you don't want to come back to my blog. You're going to cut a square. And because this is 8.5 by 11 paper, we're going to go ahead and cut it to 8 by 8. So you'll just put it in the trimmer. And you can see I'm going right to the 8 inch mark over here. Okay? And I'm trimming it so I have a perfect square piece of, of cardstock. This is why, of course, I called it the origami fold because origami paper starts out with square paper typically. Okay, now we're going to score. So we're going to bring our paper into our paper trimmer. We're going to move the cutting blade away because we don't want to accidentally cut. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place the edge of my cardstock right at the two inch mark here and I'm going to score on all four sides. You can hear my, <laughs> my computer is making noises. Just ignore it. You know, I sent my boys and my husband out of the house so that it would be nice and quiet in here and then my computer decides to make noise. I'm sorry about that. Okay, after we've scored two inches in on all four sides, then we're going to move it over to the four inch mark and we're going to make one little score line on all four sides this way as well. And you're not going to pass through the middle. You're going to leave the middle empty. So we're going to start at the score line that's two inches from the top. Start there and push away. Now you could really come down here and do this one at the same time. But for ease and for trying to remember how to do this and to keep it consistent with the, the scoring that we did the other way, um, we're just going to rotate every time and score two inches from the top or two inches down into the top. So we're starting here and we're pushing away. So now we've got that score line on all four middle sections like that, okay? I did forget to tell you that you also need like a little cushion, um, a cushion base. And what I, what I usually work on is the, just some fun foam that's underneath my grid paper because it's really wide. But 
We also have these fabulous things that are stamp and pierce mats. And I saved this one for not piercing into. So you could use this. This is wonderful foam. It's great for stamping with your photopolymer, uh, photopolymer stamps and things like that. Hey, Belinda's with us. All right. And you also need a straight edge, straight edge. So these were two supplies I forgot to mention. Now you can bring your phone folder back in and you can connect some dots. So this is where we're gonna connect. And let me just kind of point it out with a pencil. I'll do that here. Okay, so you remember where we made this score line through the middle here and we only came to this spot here? That's gonna be an intersection that we refer to. We're gonna call them intersections. This is an intersection, this one, and right here. So those are four important points on our cardstock. I hope you can see that. I think you can, hopefully you can. Okay, so we're gonna connect the dots and we're gonna bring our bone folder or if you have like a stylus or the back of a butter knife, you can use that too. Something that'll press into your paper, but we're gonna connect these points together. I'm just making a score line and I need this pad underneath because it will help for me to press this into the cardstock, press my um, my bone folder into the cardstock a little bit more. Okay, so there, we're gonna do another one here. And we'll do another one here. So we're just connecting all four of those points. And we're, we're forming another square, okay? There we go. Then we can come back in, and I'm gonna erase these. You didn't need to have those marked on your paper unless you're also working in dim light. <laughs> All right, so now we have the folds in our paper and we're gonna we're gonna crease them now We're gonna make them even more dominant and I found because um, I also taught this to our demonstrator team uh, a Couple weekends ago. Maybe it was a week and a half ago now. Um, I I'm gonna change this up a little bit uh, You guys so <laughs> if you're on my stampers with art group, we're gonna start with the outside folds first Okay, so we're gonna fold back and reinforce with our bone folder the, all of those creases that go along the outside. All of those straight line creases. And we're just folding them back. I did teach everybody that you had to go back and forth on them, but you don't. Um, this will work if you just fold them backwards. Now the other folds, we're gonna go the opposite way. So these we made into mountains like that but these we're gonna make into valleys. So now we're gonna come into all of these middle creases and we're going to make them kind of go downward like a valley. So we're emphasizing those creases. And then the last creases pretty much already form themselves. You can see these crease marks here. They are also gonna go inward, making like a little valley here. Oh, you know what? This is so cool, you guys. This is almost, uh, the hard part is almost over. Okay, <laughs> so, because once you, once you get the fold and you flattened it down, it's just the decorating that's left. And of course, hopefully you'll stick around for that too. Um, all right, so here we go. So we have now all of our creases going the direction we want them to go, but we have to now take and twist to flatten them. So this is how I kind of uh, explained it again to our demonstrator group. It's kind of like a bunch of people sitting or standing in a circle and then everyone faces one direction. So you've got like 10 people and we all face all of a sudden to our right, okay? And then you have to sit down on the lap behind you all at the same time so that you're actually comfortable and everyone's sitting on each other's laps. It, it does work. So this is what we're kind of gonna do with the corners of this fold. So we're gonna grab this, these two sections here and do you see how this is staying um, creased? This one's staying creased, but this one's staying flat. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. Now at the same time that we're pulling that one in the upper left down, we're gonna bring this one in the upper right across to the left. Now I'm grabbing it with two hands because you kind of have to have like all your hands <laughs> to do this. Now we're gonna grab the one in the lower right and we're gonna pull it up, okay? And then we're gonna grab the one in the lower left and we have to get that crease going here and we're going to pull that to the right and as we do that it twists and folds down. I'll show you that one more time. <laughs> 
Okay, so upper left comes down, upper right comes left, lower right comes up, and lower left comes to the right. And then when we flatten it, it all flattens. Oops, got a twist in there. Oh my gosh, shh, you're not supposed to see that. Okay, then when we flatten it, it all flattens down. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and reinforce all those creases on the back side with the bone folder. I was doing that second one way too fast. Let's try that again. And then we're going to decorate it, okay? So upper left, down, upper right, left, lower right, up, and lower left to the right and down. Okay, let's decorate this up. Now, do you notice when I open this up that this is kind of the um, upright area here? So as I fold it down, these can stay upright. So this is going to be our upper left corner. So when we get our paper and our trimmer and we trim our designer paper to size, we can keep that in mind. Okay, now if all these corners, if this is an 8x8 paper, all these corners are 2x2. Two two. So what size do we do the decorating with? What size panels do we do the decorating with? We're going to do just under 2 inches. And for this for this particular card, I'm going to do 1 and 7 8. So I'm just an eighth of an inch. Can you see that? Sorry. An eighth of an inch under 2 inches. And that's what size I'm trimming my designer paper to. Okay, I've already done the other four pieces. And did you notice how skilled I am? I did. <gasps> Two sheets at once. Rachel, you're so good. <laughs> hey, Nora's joining us. Okay, so now I have those papers done. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut down our black paper. And again, same size. So just under two inches. And I want to actually have six of those. You can decorate your um, panels on your origami fold card however you want. Um, and again, I'll show you those other cards at the end. But I just wanted to show you, here's the other two. I wanted to show you how I did this one exactly, okay? And then the last piece of paper we're gonna need that we haven't prepared yet is our very vanilla. And I've got my stamp ready to go, the Happy Halloween. Again, you could use any stamp set that has a Halloween message on it that fits inside this punch. Stamp that down. Move that out of the way. We're going to flip over our classic label punch. Again, I hope that's the name of it. Punch that out. And now we can go ahead and assemble. So what we'll do is we'll take our paper that looks like the words here, because those are directional. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put adhesive in all four corners. Now, if, if you want to, you know, save on adhesive, you can just do the corners. But I find it easiest to just go corner to corner with this adhesive. This is our fast fuse stuff. And it's it's a pickier kind of adhesive. It's you gotta kind of flick it at the end. So again, this is directional paper, so you'll want to make sure that it is going to stay upright on your card. There are those two pieces. Let's grab our witches hats. These do not have a direction to them. I should have had these all. Pre, um, stuck with adhesive. Okay, hopefully this will go quick. Now the one that we're going to see the most is the one on the corner, the outside corner. So between these two papers, I think this one's bolder, and so I'm going to choose that one for the outside. That's just the way I think. <laughs> and then we need our other pieces here. Our pumpkins. And go closer to the corners that I'm going. I'm trying to go fast now because I don't want you guys to get too bored with this process. Our pumpkins and our, what do you call these? I don't know. Science vials. <laughs> these guys will go in the bottom corner. And I like this print the best. So I'm going to have that in the corner corner. And this one will be right next to it. And then of the two pumpkin ones, I think I like this one the most. There we go. Oh, I did this wrong. Oh my gosh, fast fuse. No, 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 peel it up. This is what happens when you are going fast and you're nervous in front of people. You stick things down where you shouldn't. 
That's okay. We're going to cover that up with black paper. And you guys that are live with me, don't tell anyone that I did that. I'll edit it out or something. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know how to edit. Okay, now we're going to fill in <laughs> the rest of these areas with black. Now, I told you to cut out uh, six black, but we only have four panels that are this size. So this is where our long scissors are contraband scissors because again Stampin' Up! does not sell a long arm scissors anymore. This is where this one comes in handy. So we're going to take our long scissors or you could use your trimmer if you don't have one but you're just going to go from corner to corner. And I find it easier than using the snips because I can't really aim at that corner with it. So hang on a minute I got a little message on my screen. There we go. All right, here we go. So corner to corner. I can aim at that corner a lot better. And then when I'm gonna get adhesive in the corners of these triangular pieces, I put them right next to each other. And I think it's easier to get the adhesive right in those tiny little crevices that way. And we'll just kind of go across the middle. There we go. And fold it a little bit so that it's going right into that crease. Let's do that again. Let's try that again, Rachel. Oh, I guess I cut that one a little off. And then this one goes here. Now you're gonna need your black paper one more time. Because we're gonna decorate the inside. And instead of popping up your cat on dimensionals, which is kind of like what it looks like I did. I created a shadow with my black cardstock. Let me grab my black cardstock. Hang on one more time. It's right here somewhere next to me. Maybe I put it over here. Hang on a minute. Gotta love it when we lose stuff. Hang on. We'll just grab a full sheet. Okay, we're going to punch out another cat, and we're going to take the cat that we punched out of our designer paper and put adhesive on the back of that, and we're just going to lay it on top of this one, and it looks like it's a shadow. It looks like that cat is popping up more, even though it's not. And this guy will go, making sure we're looking at those words again, this little guy will go right here. And our happy Halloween. So if you have dimensionals on the inside of this, it won't fold as flat. And it's already got a lot of bulk to it because of the fold, because of the origami fold, all the layers coming on top of each other. So you pretty much want to have as little layer, little dimensionals um, in there as possible, as little lift as possible. Okay, next we'll grab some rhinestones. And we're just going to add a little bit of bling in here. It's cold here today. You know, I have one of those noses that if it's like 69 degrees or cooler, I have a constant runny nose. It's so bad. I'm going to be one of those drippy old people <laughs> someday. <laughs> Gotta love them. You know what? I totally get it now. It's not their fault. <laughs> okay, so here we go again. We're going to take that upper left, fold it down. Upper right, fold it over lower left or lower right come up and then the one over in this corner bring it over to the right okay and that's how we fold it down so there's our finished card let me show you the ones that we had before one more time so you can see those so this is done with a quilt bundle we have some really fun six by six designer paper that you can check out in our holiday catalog and it matches a, a stamp set and it has some fun embossing, a fun embossing folder that coordinates and just really pretty design. This design was um, created by my upline and my friend Susan Campfield. And so this is the one that we all recreated in our demonstrator group when I, dem when I showed this fold. And then this is one that just kind of shows off the 12 by 12 paper really well. So let's get that one folded. Or, yeah, 12 by 12 cardstock really well. And this is using that musical um, Christmas, let me find it. Hang on, it's right behind me. 
the stamp set musical season and some coordinating dies it's one of my favorites in the holiday catalog and of course we have the the snowflake embossing folder some of those glitter enamel dots and ta-da that would be a huge christmas card to make though i don't know that would have to be for someone special <laughs> All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. Thank you for joining me. So I'm going to post this on my blog on Thursday. That's the plan. And that way you can come back and see uh, the fun fold in action. You can get the measurements on my blog at stampyourartout.com. Thank you all for joining. I'm glad that you could come. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.